modern-day Turkey, a literal treasure trove of surviving relics of a lost antiquity. Temples from a bygone era, seemingly prehistoric stone-cut monolithic academically supposed tombs, countless ancient ruins, not only built from incredibly large megalithic stones, but many said stones etched with a signature which we have found at a number of sites now dotting the entire globe. This all aligns with our own researchers' conclusions, suggesting they were, in fact, left by a now lost civilization due to their concentrations focused around nearby anomalies and unexplainable features often found amongst the structures, that these unique blocks are found so often incorporated into sites impossible to explain, yet spanning most of the Earth. Yet regardless, Turkey is an excellent place for anyone to heavily research, in pursuit of fragments of evidence, overwhelmingly, undeniably, supporting our long-held postulation of lost yet once highly capable civilizations who once called these sites home. Although some stonework in the area can be acclaimed as cyclopic, Hattusa also possesses something more extraordinary. A mysterious green cube, still in situ to this day. Its continued existence and seeming resistance to grave robbing and stone robbers, perhaps due to the many stories attached to the stone, all of which claim it possesses powerful energies, one of the reasons why it has fortunately remained where it was placed untold millennia ago. Furthermore, and perhaps most intriguingly, is the possibility for our claim here on the channel that just like that of many other ruins all over Earth, not claimed by our most recent ancestors themselves, but due to this convenience, subsequently attributed to said group by modern archaeology as their work also, successfully concealing the site's true remarkable origins, especially our mysterious green stone. Rich agricultural lands once surrounded the ancient settlement, which we claim was itself built atop the remains of a now lost civilization, and their possible choice of location may have been driven by the stone itself, thus having predated said group's arrival, which according to modern archaeology and permitted timelines, dates from an inhabitation during the Bronze Age. Yet the purpose for the green stone, its past possible significance, and the seemingly still surviving wariness and reluctance of any immoral activities surrounding the stones continued life at the center, or proverbial center, or indeed foundation of this incredible site, left alone, still resting in its location, its mysterious supposed powers, documented since and many before its long recorded history within modern academic journals. Could the claims regarding the green stone be true? Even attributed with miraculous healing capabilities? The inhabitants had an excellent supply of timber for building, fertile lands providing possibly millions of now lost ancestors who grew crops of wheat in massive quantities. They had a rich diet too, with barley, lentils, and many other remnants of fruit and vegetables that were successfully being harvested. Flax has also been found to have once been harvested, however, their primary source of cloth was sheep wool. They also hunted deer responsibly within their forests, but akin to Old England, may have been a luxury reserved for the land-owning nobility alone. It seems that the people who initially created the site successfully built a functioning architecturally, irrigationally, and horticulturally advanced settlement far out of the reach of our bronze-wielding ancestors, who, we feel, simply reignited into a functioning township. Yet it seems the other settlements have all but turned to dust. Were these simply neglected by our Bronze Age ancestors, perhaps? If so, supportive of our posit of the site's efficient layout, was not the work of the Bronze Age people exhibiting a layout and managing of land far beyond their capabilities. And these neighboring sites, possibly too dilapidated to try to repair, were simply left to slowly return to nature. Yet, the green stone, we feel, due to its location, along with the many past popular native accounts of strange goings-on surrounding its claimed energy, the possibility that the stone was once held in incredibly high regard, 
is a possible history for the green stone which we find highly compelling. There are many astonishing ancient structures located within India. Arguably, some of the most intricately detailed structures to be found anywhere on Earth. We have, in the past, covered a number of these structures, not only due to the astonishing detail displayed upon their stonework, but also many other compelling enigmatic details that, to this day, remain unexplained. A personal recommendation for an alternative archaeological researcher of Indian ruins is Praveen Mohan over at Phenomenal Travel Videos. Yet, due to the countless ancient anomalies that can be found within India, we rarely step on each other's proverbial feet. For example, during my own personal research, I have not only found that many of the hillside temples, seemingly hewn from the bedrock of Earth, would even to this day be incredibly difficult to replicate, if not impossible. With some of the most astonishing, not only attached to religious belief and historical rumor to a mountain in the Himalayas, a factor we have also previously covered, with my personal observations, regardless of the fact that many locals pertain to it being an ancient pyramid, discovered noticeable evidence of the entire base of the mountain, once having been hewn into an artificial crescent. Also remains unclear is if the entire mountain is a man-made pyramid, disguised by the erosion of many millennia. The research team claimed, quote, The stratum is horizontal with the layers of stone, slightly varying in color. The dividing lines show up clear and distinct, which gives the entire mountain the facade of having been built by giant hands of huge blocks of reddish stone. With the stone quarried out to create the astonishing temples, an accepted artistic masterpiece, just like Yongyu Cave in China, have never been found. Additionally, during my own pursuit for clues as to how and indeed who could have created such temples, I have identified signature tool marks in several areas that match that of many other ancient ruins, indeed such as Yangshan Quarry, also in China. Providing strong evidence that whoever was responsible for these ruins may have indeed been the same civilization, or as our Atlantean videos have postulated, were commanded to be constructed by a dominant civilization, sharing such technologies with the native populations, employing them to create such wonders. Thus, this would also explain the matching signatures of advanced stone cutting tool marks found on different continents. Like our research into the variation into ancient stone clamps, a method that was undeniably shared throughout the globe, yet the methods of creating such clamps and the resulting metallurgy varies from continent to continent. As we have previously stated on many occasions, whoever was responsible for these incredible ancient sites seemingly vanished at some point within antiquity, leaving many ancient quarries and temples unfinished. One of the temples that we use to link the tool marks with other sites around the world, Vetivan Coil. One of the precious, abandoned sites that like so many other ancient advanced ruins that were being built around the world, vitally shows the rough stone-cutting signatures left by an advanced machinery that was once responsible for their initial cutting, this before the refinement of such structures carvings. With many other sites in India, that due to their geographical positioning, and thus protection from erosion, still possesses these same signature tool marks. However, the purpose of today's video is probably one of the most peculiar anomalies in India, and could be perceived by some as one of the most compelling pieces of evidence of advanced ancient machinery having once been responsible for these ancient structures. Known as the Tanjore Brihadiswarar Temple, which was supposedly constructed by the Cholas. However, the temple possesses a characteristic which was not only out of the capabilities of the Cholas dynasty, but to me, is compelling proof of a pre-Diluvian civilization having been responsible for its construction. As atop the temple, at a height of 216 feet above ground level, is a solid lump of granite carved with perfection 
yet has been realized at an astonishing weight of 80 tons. To put that in perspective, according to academia, an ancient culture with no advanced technologies, especially lifting technologies, a dynasty well studied and explored by modern academia. The heartland of the Cholas was the fertile valley of the Kaveri River. Although their power was considerable and was probably complemented by such claimed of astonishing feats of architecture, regardless, the question remains. How did this civilization raise such an enormous stone? It seems to us that such claims were merely made to impress their enemies and allies. And the fact that academia is severely lacking any explanation as to how such a feat was accomplished strongly supports my suspicion that the temple is in fact an antediluvian ruin, and as such, highly compelling. If you enjoy our content, if you think our battle worthy, please help us to continue our voyage of discovery in unraveling the mysteries of history. Links to donate can be found within the description. Without you, we cannot survive. Thank you. The great city of London holds many secrets, drenched in ancient structures, and often bustling with their still surviving ancient societies. It is a place where one can become lost in a vivid, rich, and well-documented history. However, some of the most interesting ancient stories attached to the city are often overlooked. And at 111 Cannon Street is an excellent example of this. Placed within a conspicuous box at the base of the building is what is known as the London Stone. Made from oolitic limestone, what is interesting regarding the London Stone is firstly its found location, the fact that it was buried some 18 feet under the ground, and also the possible past importance of the stone, stretching far back into forgotten history. Once shown in this position on the copper plate map of London dating to the 1550s and the woodcut map of the 1560s, the memory of its past importance, however, seems to have gradually faded over the centuries. It was described by the London historian John Stowe in 1598 as a great stone called London Stone, fixed in the ground very deep, fastened with bars of iron. The earliest reference he found was in a list of properties belonging to Christ Church. The list was within a gospel book given to the cathedral by Ethelstane, King of the West Saxons, dating as far back as 924. And although now having a mysterious origin, London Stone was still a very well-known landmark within medieval London. In 1450, Jack Cade entered the city with his men striking the London Stone with his sword and claiming he was now lord of this city. Why did such a plain-looking stone at this specific location once hold such standing and importance within ancient Britain? By the turn of the 21st century, most of the stone's earliest history had been forgotten. However, in the 1960s, archaeologists began to realize the significance of its positioning linking it to an alignment with many once-existing Roman buildings. Additionally, and strongly linking it to an extremely ancient relic, London Stone has been identified as a mark stone, and like many other Neolithically claimed structures, centered upon several ley lines passing through central London, now believed to have been an essential element in London's original sacred geometry. After substantial research, Numerous individuals have come up with a controversial history regarding the London Stone, now believing that the stone could, in fact, be the final surviving remnant of an ancient inhabitancy of London, possibly pre-Ice Age, far before the city we see today was ever in existence, and may actually be the only remaining surviving block from the ruin of this original city. How old is the London Stone? Was it really a part of a lost civilization city? A place we call London? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. 
In 1990, an Italian geologist named Angelo Pitoni would find an unusual stone while visiting Sierra Leone, a mysterious artifact that has baffled all who have studied it. A local Fuller chief was said to have given it to Pitoni, a blue stone with mysterious white lines upon its surface. After returning to Europe, Pitoni took the stone to the Institute of Natural Sciences of Geneva and then University La Sapienza in Rome for further analysis. To his surprise, tests revealed that it was not a turquoise or indeed anything that could officially be identified. Furthermore, the blue stone didn't correspond to any known mineral. But the most intriguing thing is its color. Researchers still do not understand how the stone has acquired or retained its color. This even though several universities and laboratories have analyzed the artifact at great length. It seems its color remains a mystery. Mysteriously, at the University of Utrecht, the stone underwent several tests with use of strong acids, but none of the acids could affect the stone. It was even heated to over 3000 degrees Celsius, yet its composition wasn't altered. When a small piece of the stone was pulverized and viewed under the microscope, it curiously lost its color. Now known as the Sky Stone, according to analysis, an amazing 77.17% of the stone is somehow made of pure oxygen. The remaining percentage was divided between carbon, calcium and another unknown element. When researchers crushed a piece of the sky rock and mixed it with acetone, hexane and methylene and then enhanced the extractions with ultrasound, they were eventually able to locate an organic compound that is currently unknown to science. Dated at 55,000 years old, just what is the sky stone? How could it possibly be made mostly of oxygen? Is this stone a past remnant left by a once advanced civilization? Or maybe its origins are not even local to Earth. Amazingly, it seems that Pitoni's sky stone is not unique. There has in fact been similar finds in other places of the Earth, most notably Brazil. The other sample of sky stone was submitted to GRS Swiss Labs for testing and analysis by an anonymous dealer. Intrigued, American artist and designer Jared Collins tried to buy the small cutaway piece from the dealer so he could study it further but the dealer refused to sell it. He wouldn't even name a price for the larger full stone. It seems there are indeed other exhibits of this curious stone made mostly of pure oxygen in existence, yet the mystery surrounding their makeup and origin persists to this day. Now I'd like to go on to the next graphic and let's linger on this one a moment because this is worth looking at. This is a very strange pair of images. These are two images. They were taken 12 days apart and this just happened. I mean, this is going on right now. This is where Opportunity is currently parked and you can see 12 days apart, a rock just simply appeared. On January 8th, 2014, a strange Mars rock was spotted by Opportunity resting in a spot where earlier there was nothing but soil. The rock, which scientists now call Pinnacle Island, is in the shape of a donut, white on the outside, red in the middle. It appeared after Opportunity had just finished a short drive. It looks like a jelly donut, said Steve Squires, the rover's lead scientist at Cornell University in Ithaca, during a recent NASA event, marking Opportunity's 10th year on Mars. It appeared. It just plain appeared at that spot, and we haven't driven over that spot. Strangely, NASA has remained pretty silent in regards to the details of the find for the past few years. 
only recently coming forward to claim they had solved the mystery of its sudden appearance, claiming the rover had indeed disturbed the rock somehow. The odd rock is located in a spot on Murray Ridge, along the wall of Endeavor Crater where Opportunity spent the Martian winter. A closer look at the rock using Opportunity's robotic arm-mounted instruments has revealed, quote, it's like nothing we ever seen before. It's very high in sulfur, very high in magnesium. It has twice as much manganese than anything we've seen on Mars, said Squires with excitement during an event in January. I don't know what any of this means, we're completely confused, but we're having a wonderful time," he stated. Squires said rover scientists have two working theories on how the Pinnacle Island rock mysteriously appeared near Opportunity. One suggests that the rock is a piece of debris from a meteorite impact somewhere near the rover that just so happened to land in front of Opportunity, while the other theory is that the rock was somehow kicked up by one of rover's six wheels during its recent drive. This is regardless of Squire's original comment regarding the rover not having previously traversing that particular area. Did something actually throw this very interesting and possibly extremely important rock in the rover's direction? We already have the rover's mysterious cleaning events, which have occurred on many occasions. With every strange event that occurs on Mars, the possibility of outside help from an intelligent entity becomes less absurd. Did an alien or possibly covert astronauts throw us a bone in the form of a stone? We may never know where the rock came from, but we should all be thankful the rover found it. Squires said the weird Mars rock is an example of how the red planet keeps surprising scientists even 10 years later. He finished by saying, quote, Mars keeps throwing new things at us. As always, thanks for watching guys and until next time, take care.